did not come this far to leave with an empty stomach. So feed me with bread from heaven. Preach the word. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Suffolk and Bishop. Praise Lord, everyone. Praise Lord, everybody. Is he all right? We certainly give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, head of all things, our Suffolk and Bishop, Tony Thomas. Don't y'all pay no attention to all that build up. You might not get what you think you're going to get tonight. I've learned these brothers will set you up. You got to watch them. You got to watch them. But we love him tonight. We certainly honor Amen. Elder Liggins. Amen. Southern Bishop Tony Thomas. Angel of this house. District Elder Richardson. Assistant Pastor Bethlehem Temple. District Elder Braxton. Suffolk and Bishop Julian. Amen. All these great, great men of the gospel. We certainly feel honored tonight. There's a lot of power in this place. They could have called any of them and they would have rocked the house. I know them. We also honor, I'm going to ask you if you stand as I call you, not the congregation, I'm sorry, not the congregation. I'm going I'm to call some more names. <laughs> I ain't done name calling. First Lady Julian, would you stand? First Lady Julian, I know she's around here somewhere. She probably someplace working in the vineyard. First Lady Richardson, if you can stand. First Lady Thomas. And finally, last but not least, my First Lady and only lady. First of the Eubanks. We honor them and we honor all the saints of Most High God. We do say praise the Lord. I don't know if you know it or not, but there's not a better place for you to be on this Friday night. I've tread many grounds on a Friday night, but they were not the grounds that I should have been treading. And I thought I was having a good time, but I didn't know what a time I was missing. David said I was glad. He said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the best place for you to be, as well as your children. My Bible tells me to bring them up in the way they should go. Not the way they want to go. The words say foolish is bound up in them. <laughs> But the rod of correction. So I want you to know that they are in the right place also. I believe today, and I'm not going to stay on this, but I believe if more parents raise their children instead of the children raising the parents, we wouldn't have some of the problems we have today. Nevertheless, if you will go with me, thank God for everyone's come 
from near and far, we thank God for Bethlehem Temple, Battle Creek. Thank God for them. If you go with me to the book of John, the 11th chapter, I'm not going to ask you to stand because our reading is relatively extensive. We don't want anybody to fall out <laughs> before the word. So you may remain in your seats. John, the 11th chapter. We'll read some verses there. Then we will go to the book of Philippians, the second chapter. In the book of John, St. John, 11th chapter. No, y'all don't have to stand. Now. I see we don't have to stand because the reading's quite extensive. But if y'all are trying to show y'all young, <laughs> they already know. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Verse number one, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Verse three through six, therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And Jesus heard that he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the extent ye may believe. Nevertheless. Let us go unto him. Verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave for four days already. Now, if you will, go with me to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter. We'll read one verse there. <clears throat> Philippians, second chapter, 13th verse, verse 13. Verse 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Subject on today, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. In this life, there are things that happen around us, among us, and to us that we did not plan, order, or anticipate. There are various weather conditions that occur that we're not in control of, that often oftentimes proved to be dangerous and damaging and causing fatalities from these unexpected tsunamis and earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards, and floods. There may be other devastating situations that arise other than weather conditions. Diseases, illness. People are contending with illnesses that may substantially reduce the quality of this life. People are struggling with financial challenges which many cannot see a solution. Relationships breaking down leaving some with deep, long-lasting scars that they're having problems dealing with even on today. Families have allowed the devil to sever relationships. Mental illness is growing at a rate that the 
health care facilities cannot keep up with accommodations. The spirit of the enemy has attacked the church, causing many to lose focus of what the Lord thy God requires. False prophets are infiltrating the churches. The book of Jude, the writer tells us that there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul told young preacher Timothy, in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, Paul tells us, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, Paul goes on to tell us, for the time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But in spite of all these things and these hardships we face, to God be the glory. God, he still sits on the throne. We find in the book of John, 11th chapter, we find the situation at the discomfort of many. The Son of God, Jesus He's glorified. If I may go back and read a couple of the verses again. First verse tells us now there was a certain, there was sick, certain man sick named Lazarus, Bethany, town of Martha, and Mary. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. When Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and he also loved Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that Lazarus was sick, he abode two days still, in the same place where he was. Verse 14, Jesus said unto them plainly, and Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent you might believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Verse 17, then when Jesus came, he found that he laid in the grave for four days already. Down to verse 23 through 26, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Oh, Lord. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He said, Believest thou this? And then we go down to verse 32. The word of God tells us, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 35, the Bible says that Jesus wept. God, he goes to the extent of allowing death and many to be saddened 
to accomplish his purpose. Have I got a witness? I find, church, in order for men to know who he is, sometimes, sometimes uh, the saints must go through some difficult times. Yeah, we may say some undeserving times. Uh, somebody said, what did I do to deserve this? Well, uh, you got saved and decided you wanted to be a vessel fit for the master's use. Um, and he has a way of using us that may not fit our comfort zone. I heard Paul saying in Philippians there, uh, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do uh, for his good pleasure. And we go back here in John 11th chapter, we find here where Jesus allows this sickness and death of his friend Lazarus to overtake Lazarus that the Jews might believe on him. And Jesus has a way of teaching us lessons that's beyond what is being taught at the universities uh, and uh, at the higher learning institutions. Uh, I heard him saying that this sickness and death, uh, the Bible tells us that this sick and de death, uh, it took Mary and Martha and it took the Jews by surprise. Uh, but I want you to understand tonight uh, that even though there was they were surprised, uh, Jesus, he was not surprised. Uh, and little did they know um, uh, that Jesus, he was up to something. Have I got a witness? Uh, little did they know that this was an opportunity uh, to cause men to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, uh, and yet he was God manifest in the flesh, uh, and that Jesus was sent to do the will of the Father, uh, that the Son of Man might be glorified among men. We find here in verse number four uh, where Jesus tells them that this sickness uh, is not unto death, uh, but that the glory of God, uh, that the Son of God might be glorified. Uh, and as we look at verse number 11, uh, Jesus said that our friend Lazarus, uh, he is asleep, uh, but I'm going to wake him up. Uh, Jesus was merely letting them know Know, huh, that Lazarus, he will rise again. Huh? Have I got a witness? Huh? And then when we go down to verse number 14, huh, we heard Jesus saying huh, that Lazarus is dead. Huh? What he was doing was letting them know huh, by your standard, huh, Lazarus is dead. Huh? But we go down to verse number 15. Huh? I heard Jesus saying, and I'm glad, huh? I'm glad for your sake. Uh, that I was not there. Uh, now you know uh, that Jesus had to be up to something. Uh, anytime a friend dies uh, and a friend reports he's glad uh, that he's dead, uh, that he, I'm glad for your sake uh, that I was not there to keep him alive, uh, that this was for your benefit. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, Let us know uh, when it's all over. Uh, this this thing that you're going through, huh, it's going to be to your benefit huh, when this episode is all over. Huh, it's going to be to your benefit. Huh. In other words, this thing is working for your good. Huh. You might not understand it. Huh. It may not be comfortable. Huh. It may be painful. Huh. You might not feel like you can go on. Huh. But aren't you glad? Huh. Aren't you glad that Paul penned huh, in Romans huh, that we know that all things huh, work together for the good huh, of those that love the Lord huh, and they're called according to his purpose. Huh. Say yes. Huh. 
say yeah we find here as we go down to verse 23 where Jesus said to Martha thy brother shall rise again letting me know whatever you're going through that this is not the end of the story if you hold on everything is going to be alright no wonder Paul looked at it and said if in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. Have I got it with this? I'm reminded of Brother Job. When Brother Job looked at his situation, I heard Job saying, If a man die, shall he live again? I heard him saying, All of the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait on the Lord until my change come say yeah say yeah sometimes church sometimes it might not feel like it it might not look like it but we have this confidence that our change, our change is coming. No wonder Paul declared, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Have I got a witness? I heard him saying in a moment and a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, the trump is going to sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Have I got a witness? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Death is swallowed up in victory. Say, yeah, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad when I look back here at verse 32 to 35, the Bible says that Mary and Martha, they were crying. In other words, they were all emotionally broke up because their friend had died. The Bible says that Jesus himself, he even wept. Have I got a witness? Even though he is God, even though he was God in flesh. Uh, he had feelings just like we do. Uh, because I heard uh, the word saying, uh, for we have not uh, a high priest uh, who cannot be touched uh, with the feeling of our infirmities. Uh, but in all points, uh, he was tempted uh, just like we uh, yet without sin. Uh, say yeah. <laughs> Say yeah as I go down. Y'all just stay with me. I'm not going to be long. As I go down to verse 39, I heard Jesus saying, move the stone. Move the stone. Martha looked at it. Wait a minute, Jesus. This body's been in here for four long days. The body is decomposing. The body stinks by now. Why would we move the stone? I heard Jesus saying, did not tell you if you believe you will see the glory of God. Have I got a witness? The Bible says that Jesus prayed. Father, I thank you for hearing me that these might believe that you sent me. And the Bible says that Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Have I got a witness? Somebody said if he hadn't called his name, everybody in that cemetery would have leaped up by them graves. Say yeah. Say yeah. And the Bible said, he that was dead, he came forth. Don't you know we were once dead in sin? Don't you know we were once dead in our trespasses? But Jesus, Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody used to sing the song, look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Light. Aren't you so glad? Look where God has brought you from. Say yeah. Say yeah. The Bible says 
Wait a minute, church. But the Bible says Lazarus was bound. He had on them grave clothes when he come up out of there, just like we were bound. But I'm so glad the songwriter told us I was bound, but he set me free. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad when you were born of the water and of the spirit and you rose to walk in the newness of life? Aren't you glad? Oh, glory. Aren't you glad that God said to set him free? Aren't you glad? He said, take off them gold, them grave clothes. Take them dead clothes off of him. Take those grave clothes off of her. Take them dead clothes off. Take them bad attitudes off. Take the works of the flesh off. And let him go that he might glorify me. Aren't you glad when God saved you? Aren't you glad when God saved you? He told the devil, take off them dead works. Take the sin and shame off of him. Take that street life off of him. I don't know about you, but when he saved me, he said, take them clubs out of his life. Take the cabaret out of his life. Take them cigarettes out of his mouth. Take that liquor bottle out of his hand. Take off that lying tongue. Take that disobedient spirit off of him. Take that rebellious spirit off of him. Take that spirit of disbelief of him. Take that unforgiving spirit off of her. Take away the envy. Take away the jealousy. Take away the strife. Take away the backbiting. He's no longer dead. He is alive. Take them dead clothes. Take them off. Take them off. Take off that vengeful spirit. Take off selfishness. Take off pride. Take that haughty spirit off of me. Finally, my brother, when you take it off, put on some more clothes. Redress him. Redress him. Gird his loins with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Shout his feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, put on some faith. The shield of faith uh, that he might be able uh, to quench the darts uh, of the devil. Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. If you love him, say yeah. Finally, my brother, uh, be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might. Uh, put on the whole armor. Uh, not part of it. Uh, put on the whole armor. Uh, Lord, I'm running. Uh, I got to make a hundred ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine and a half. It won't do. Come on, put your hands together. Redressing, redressing. Let God take them dead clothes off. You're no longer dead. You're alive. Redress him. Redress her with the fruit of the spirit. Put love in his heart. Give him some peace. Give him some meekness. Some temperance. Some long suffering. Say yeah. Put on the fruit that he might be used to my glory. Has anybody in the church? Has anybody in the church been redeemed? We ought to praise him. We ought to praise him. I heard the word saying, let the redeemed in the Lord, since you're no longer dead, since you no longer have on those dead clothes, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who's been redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Is anybody glad about it? Is anybody glad? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Take them off. Take off them great Dave clothes. But don't leave him standing there naked. Redress him with the right stuff. 
Is that all right? Did anybody in the church have a mind to let God dress you with the right stuff since you're no longer dead to sin and shame? Anybody in the church have a mind to let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus? Say yeah. Say yeah. Whoa, glory. Whoa, glory. No, oh, glory. You're no longer dead. You're no longer dead. Take off the dead clothes. Put on the clothes of life because now you're living. Am I going to win this? But before I take my seat, before I take my seat, I just stopped by tonight to tell somebody, tell somebody, if you give God glory, give God honor, give him praise, he will make a way for you in spite of your situation, in spite of what's going on in your home, on your job, in your health, if you glorify him and magnify him and lift up his name, he will, he'll make a way for you. If you glorify him, he will not withhold no good thing from you. If you give God glory, give him honor, give him praise, he'll give you the desires of your heart as long as you delight yourself in him. If you give him glory, if you give him honor, give him praise, he will he'll be a lamp unto your feet. He'll be a light into your pathway. If you give him glory, he will he'll be a fence all around you. He'll be a bridge over troubled water. He'll be water in a dry place, a rock in a weary land. He'll make the crooked place straight and the rough place smooth. If you give him glory, give him honor, he will make a path for you. Say yeah. If you give him glory, give him honor, give him praise, he'll make your enemy be at peace with you. He will make your enemy your footstool. He'll give you joy in sorrow, hope for tomorrow. He'll turn, he'll turn your morning into dancing over and over and over again. Joy in sorrow and hope for tomorrow. He will make the impossible possible if you give him glory give him honor give him praise come on put your hands together he'll make a way for you he'll make a way for you praise him in the morning Praise him in the noonday. Praise him when the sun goes down. Have I got a witness? He'll make a way for you. He'll do great things for you. Have I got a witness? Since God brought you out, since he brought you alive, since he took death and shame off of you, when he saved you, he gave you a song that the angels cannot sing. I've, I've been washed by the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed from the blood of the lamb. I don't have to wear them dead clothes because I got a peril of life and life more abundantly. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Because we've been raised from the dead. Because of this great thing. I want you to understand something. Lazarus had nothing to do with being raised. You ain't got nothing to do with you being saved. It was the grace of God. 
was not nothing good about us when God picked us up. Turn me around. Set my feet on solid ground. Oh, oh, you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him. You could have been dead, sleeping in your grave. But he made old death behave. All oh, because of his grace. All oh, because he loved us. We don't have to wait till the battle is over. I don't have to wait until the battle's over. I believe I shout now. Say yes. Say yes. Is he all right? Is he all right? Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Because he's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of your praise. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 He's worthy. Somebody say he's worthy to be praised. All of us, all of us can draw something from this story tonight. That we were also in a tomb. We were also bound. We also had our grave clothes. Amen. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ that giveth us the victory. Amen. Tonight is your night. If there's someone tonight that has not been born again of water and of spirit, you can come at this time. Amen. Altar workers can come at this time. If there are any altar workers here, amen. You can come at this time. The doors of the church are open. It's not his will that any should perish, but all will come unto repentance and to the acknowledging of the truth. And I want you to know right now, we believe in the imminent coming of Jesus. He can come at any time. He's only waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Is there one today? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on today. Come on. Don't let this message, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, do not allow this message to go on deaf ears. Is there one today? He's the same. Come on today. We've heard a powerful message today. An anointed message. But the gospel goes forth for one purpose. To bring souls into the kingdom. Come on today. Come on today. Is there one? Is there one? If you just want to come up here for prayer, you can come on up here for prayer. These altar workers will pray for you. If you have a need that you want the Lord to help you with, you can come right now. Glory to your name. Come on today. Is there one? Is there one? We have water prepared. You can get the Holy Ghost right now. It may be mostly us here, but I know there's one out there. There's one out there. Come on today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on today. You can give him the glory today with your life. You can commit your life to him today. Lazarus had to go back into the grave. And he's waiting for the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. If you want to be resurrected today, come on. Come on today. Is there one? He that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you believe in him right now, you shall never die. For he that hath the Son hath everlasting life. If you want everlasting life today, come down to this altar today. 
Is there one today? Is there one? Is there one? Clap your hands. Is there one today? They want to, if you want to come, come on, come, come, come. Come on today. Come on today. I don't want to let this go. This was an anointed message. A message of hope. A message of power. Deliverance to let you know that you can come today. He is all you need. You don't need anything else but him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that raised Lazarus out of the grave is the same God that wants to raise you to walk in the newness of life today. All you have to do is come. Come on today. Come on. Come on. Come on today. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory.